Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be working on regions cut by slashes. And in this one you have an n by n grid composed of a 1 by 1 squares where each square consists of a forward or backward slash or a space. And they divide the square into contiguous regions. Given the string grid or the grid return the number of regions. Note that the backward slash are escaped so backward is this. So it's kind of weird what they're saying but let's just take a look. So this first thing is actually a two by two grid and this is a top row. So the top row is actually a space and then this. So if I divide it, it's easier to see. So you have space and then this guy. And then the bottom is this guy and then space. And so there's two regions, right? So this is one region, two. And this is also a two by two grid. So this is, and that's why I'd, there's like a bunch of things with this problem that are kind of annoying. This is one of them. So it's kind of hard to understand this. So we have a space and then this thing and then space space. And this is just one region, right? This whole thing, there's no disconnection. And then here we divide it again. It's also two by two. So the first thing is a forward slash. This is a backward slash when there's two of them, then another backward and a forward. So here we have one region, two, three, four, Okay, and the way to do this is like once you figure out the trick kind of this is, this is also why I don't like this problem It's a very easy problem, but figuring out the trick is not super intuitive and the trick is basically Take this and transform it into something that's very easy to tell where this thing is a separator Like right now if I just have a grid like this like there's so many combinations how do you tell, like, what if I have this, you know, what if I have, you know, some other stuff? It's, it's, it's hard to tell, like, like, what if I have this? There's just too many to figure it out. And it's kind of hard to tell, like, what do I look for? What's the pattern? So the easier way to do that is to transform each of these one by one blocks into a bigger block. And then we can easily spot the number of sections. So what we can do is we can actually transform it into a three by three, and I'll show you why. Let's let's just try to transform it into a two by two first and see why it doesn't work. So if we transform this one into a two by two, like let's say the forward slash looks like this, and then let's copy a couple of these actually. So let's just say we have a couple of these, like one, two, three, four. Okay, so let's say the forward slash looks like this backward slash looks like this and then spaces and now we can easily represent the slash by just using some character so we can say like um maybe something that doesn't have anything is a zero and then something that's part of a slash is a one and so this will be this will be equivalent to a forward slash this will be equivalent to a backward slash and just four zeros will be a blank and so the reason you can't have that let me see if i can remember it's something like this um if i have this yeah so let's say i have a shape like this so this would be forward slash forward slash forward, forward slash forward slash so here there's four sections and so this would be um if we don't use a slash it'll be like one 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 like this and these will all be zeros and ideally what you want to do is you want to be able to travel like you want to travel from each zero to all other zeros and that and then it's like a it's like an islands problem, right? Where like you start here, you go to all the zeros possible, and then that's like one section, and then you go to the next one, you go to all the zeros possible and so on. And so the problem here is this is actually a section, but it's diagonal. And you wanna make sure that this is that this works because this is still a section. Like, right, if I draw the lines like this, this is still a section. But I don't want to, ideally, I don't want to move diagonally. So here, in order to cover the section, I'd have to move diagonally. So that's why you need a bigger grid. You need a three by three to make it work. You can do bigger than three by three as well, but three by three is like the minimum you need to represent these things. So if we go back and we make a three by three this time. Okay, and we represent that same thing. So four forward slashes. And then you can, you're gonna kind of see how it's a pretty easy problem once you can get to that idea, but it's kind of hard to get to that idea. So four forward slashes will be just, you can write it in like one, 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 that's a forward slash, one, one, one. 
and then like this. Okay. And then all the rest are zeros, right? So zero. Okay. And now we can actually traverse from all zeros to all other zeros that are in the same group without moving diagonally, which is our goal. Because we can't move diagonally through slashes, but we need to be able to get to this region of zeros, and now we can, because we can simply just move down like this. Right, because if we have a slash here, we can't cross the slash, that's why it's important not to move diagonally. But if we have slashes next to each other, we still wanna be able to move in that region, and now we can. So the basic algorithm is we take a forward slash and represent it like this, um, like this. Then we take a backward slash and represent it the other way, right? So it'll just be one, one, one this way. And then a space will just be all zeros. And then the rest of it is pretty easy. It's just like how many islands are here where one, or, you know, if you make your slash zeros and whatever, it's basically how many islands do I have where islands are zeros. And then it's just like a basic DFS traversal. So we could say like, okay, well, let's start over here. And we have a zero, so that's one island. And then we'll just go to like every neighboring zero and turn it into a one. So we can say like, okay, we'll start here. We'll turn all these into one because they're neighboring and we can go up, down, left, right. So that's one island. So here like islands or something, just one. Then we go to the next zero we find and we traverse everything that's a neighbor of that. So this, 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 this. Probably would have been easier actually. Yeah, let me, re let me redo that. Okay, apparently I can't. Actually, I wonder if I can. Can I? No, whatever. It's fine. Okay, so let's just go back and have it like this. So this is the second island. I guess I'll do the rest of them in a different color so it's easier to see. So the next zero we get to is here. So every zero that this touches will be another island. So I think what I can do is I can do this and maybe copy. No? Okay, whatever. I'll just keep it green then. If green it is. Okay, so this is the next island. Let me actually go back here. Okay, so this this one will, um, you know, it'll get all of these. So that's island number three. And then this is island number four. And so that's all it is, is you just have to realize that like, if I, instead of using these lines, I can make them bigger um, if I make a square grid, then my line will, will match up, right? Because if I have a line here and a line here, I can just make a bunch of ones and that can symbolize my line. And then everything else is just zeros and then I can easily traverse. And so, yeah. So if we actually go back to our original thing with all zeros, uh, actually, whatever, it's fine. We can have original grid. So yeah, so now no matter what shape you have, like let's say we have this shape. Now it's very easy to actually make these sections because anything that's in the shape will be ones. So like this will be one, one, one. And then everything else that's not a one is gonna be a new grid of zeros that we're gonna reach. So like this will be a zero and it's gonna be able to get to all of these. This will be a zero, it's gonna be able to get to all of these. This will be a zero, it's gonna be able to get to all of these. This will be a zero and get to all of these. So it's a very easy, just transform the line into ones and then and then how many islands of zeros do I have? Which is like a very easy problem. But like I said, it is hard to go from this to this realization. There is some other like union find stuff you can do, but the time complexity is basically the same because all we're doing is tur turning a one by one into a three by three. So we're just taking these dimensions and multiplying by nine, which is fine. Okay, so let's take a look at the code. So essentially we make a new grid that's three by three, and then we go through our original grid. And then if it's a line that's left to right, so let me go and erase. So imagine like this is the cell we're at. Actually, we'd be at some cell in our original grid. So this would be like in our original grid. So this is a three by three, but our original grid would look like a two by two here. Oh, this is not a three by three. This is just like every, every cell is turned into three. So here's our original grid, right? And then we take all of these. And so basically this cell maps to this three by three, this cell maps to this three by three and so on. 
So if we get to this cell, and this is like a line here, then we basically have to say, okay, whatever this index is multiplied by three, whatever this index is multiplied by three, that's this cell here. And then what we have to do is we have to make these three cells a one. So this is like, you know, row zero, or whatever row we're in, column plus two, the next row, column plus one, and the next row, column. And then a backwards, like let's say this is gonna correspond to this then the backwards would just be, this is a one, this is a one, this is a one. And if it's an empty space, we can just go to the next one because we'll initially just fill this whole thing with zeros. So if it's a, yeah, if it's a line going um, right to, or left to right, I guess, then for the first row, it's gonna be the last column that's filled, then the middle column, then the left column, right? Because this is the, this is, this variation is a last, then middle, then left. And if it's the other way, then it'll be the first column for the first row, the middle column for the second row, and then third column. If it, and if it's a if it's a space, we don't do anything because it'll just be a zero. Then we basically just do a DFS. So we can just go through our grid, and anytime we find a zero, we will just DFS to any other zero we can and turn them all to ones, and then increment our result. So if we have a zero, increment our result, and just do a DFS from there. And then the DFS is really easy. If we're out of bounds or it's a one return, we can't, we can't go from zeros to ones. We have to go from zeros to zeros and we just go in all four directions. We go in all four directions and turn our number into a one. And that's basically it. So let's run this guy. Yeah, curious what some other solutions are. Rank parent. Okay, so this is union fine. Yeah, you can do some like union fine with, with like some triangles and some other stuff, but it's kind of the same thing. But basically the main idea for this problem is however way you do it is you want to transform these slashes into actual data structures that you can use. And the way to do it in this case is a three by three grid or bigger, you could do like a four by four grid if you want to or so on. But three by three is the minimum where if you have this case, you can still reach sections that are diagonally connected. If you make it any smaller, you can't. Okay, um, yeah, so let's go through the time complexity and space and all that. Okay, so we make a new grid that's n squared, essentially. So this is like n squared. And then we go through our original grid, rows and columns, and then this is constant, this is constant. So this is just n squared again. And then we go through our new grid, which is n squared times nine, which is just n squared. And then we DFS. And DFS with a visited set um, across a matrix will be, uh, like if you have a matrix that's n squared and you're only visiting every cell once, that you'll only visit every cell once. So that will be, so traversing the whole matrix and doing all the DFSs will be n squared together. And space. So we have a new matrix that's our original matrix times nine, which is just n squared, uh, this guy. And yeah, that's all we have is like the new matrix and then a result and the new matrix is just the original matrix and nine, nine is a constant number. So just n squared, n squared. And yeah, I think that's gonna be all. Um, hopefully this was helpful. And if you did like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. I don't know if I'll do like the weekly contest on the weekend. Maybe I will, I'm not sure. And I'm also gonna start adding Go solutions cause uh, we use some Go at work. So I've been like playing around with it and I'll start doing some stuff in Go. Plus Go is pretty good. It's it's kind of similar to kind of similar to Python, um, not super verbose and static, so kind of nice. But yeah, it's gonna be uh, all for this one. Hopefully, you liked it. If you did, uh, yeah, like the video, and I'll see you next one. Thanks for watching.